Hello, everyone, and welcome to this intermediate yoga Pilates blend class. My name is Tracy Renee Stafford, and I've been teaching yoga and Pilates and other mindful movement for several decades. And I just love what these two forms offer in terms of developing mindfulness, core strength, flexibility, balance, and just overall connection to the body from the inside out. Um, and today's intermediate flow class is going to be focusing on um, some all fours work. So we're going to be working the upper body strength, the core, the hips. Um, then we're going to be doing some seated things. So really working our flexibility through our spine and through our hamstrings. Um, and so I hope you really enjoy. It's really great if you have some previous experience in yoga and Pilates, because I'm going to be moving at a little bit faster pace than a beginner level. But I will be giving a lot of technical cues so that you're always as safe as possible. So please do listen to all the good information that I'm giving, but more importantly, listen to your own body so that you always feel safe and supported. OK, so let's get started. So I'll get you to start off into a child's pose. And so if you can have your knees a little bit apart, your hands a little wider than shoulder width apart, and then coming to relax as comfortably as you can in the child's pose position. And so if you can be pointing your index finger straight ahead, spreading out in a relaxed way all 10 fingers, and planting the palms into the floor. So especially anchoring through the in mound of the index finger, and the mound of the pinky finger and the heel of the hand. Pull the shoulders wide apart. So feeling the shoulder blades wrap around to the sides of the ribs and then having the arms energized so you feel some tone through the biceps and the triceps. And then just taking some time to breathe here. And so if you can direct the inhale to the back of the ribs as though you're spreading out the back of the ribs as you breathe in, widening the space between your shoulder blades. And as you breathe out, gently draw the belly up away from the thighs. Okay, so inhale, expand the back of the ribs widely. And exhale, draw the belly button away from the thighs and draw the sternum up away from the floor. So spreading out that space in between the shoulder blades even more. A couple more breaths. Inhale, expanding the back of the ribs widely. And exhaling, drawing the belly button up away from the floor, the sternum up. Okay, you want a deep fold in the hips. Just feeling weight through the tailbone. Last breath. Expanding widely through the back. And lifting up the belly, lifting up the sternum. Good, okay, and then come up into an all fours position. So you wanna have your hands right underneath your shoulders, lengthen out through the spine so the crown of the head is reaching forward, and just have the elbows in a slight bend. Okay, so they're not hyper extended. If you very slightly bend your elbows, you can pull your shoulders away from the ears and squeeze the muscles in the armpit if you can imagine that you have a tennis ball in between the, the armpit. Okay, we're going to do the cat spine. So as you inhale, arc the head and the tail up, widening the sitting bones and the chest open. And then exhale as you round the spine, squeezing the ribs in and pulling the navel to the spine and curling the tailbone towards the floor. Okay, so inhale, reach the chest forward, widen the sitting bones, opening the chest and the hips and exhaling round in the spine, squeezing out all your air, squeezing the ribs in, drawing the navel up and curling the tailbone down. We'll do two more. Inhaling, send the chest forward, widening the collarbones, widening the sitting bones. And exhaling as you round, focus on the belly drawing in, so not clenching your glutes, instead focusing on the belly. And one more, inhaling, reaching the chest forward, widening the collarbones, widening the sitting bones, and exhaling, rounding, squeezing the ribs, drawing the navel in, letting the tailbone curl to the floor. And then come back into a tabletop position so your shoulder blades feel pulled down your back. And keeping your shoulder blades down your back, we're gonna reach opposite arm and leg out. And so, we're going to reach your right leg back and your left arm forward. We're going to exhale as you do that. And then inhale as they open out to the sides of the room. 
exhale as they return to front and back and inhale as they lower and we're going to go to the other side so exhaling opposite arm and leg reach out inhale open out to the sides of the room exhale return to front and back and inhales as they lower and we'll just continue changing sides exhaling opposite arm and leg reach inhaling opening out to the sides of the room exhale return to front and back and inhale lower now as you're doing that keep the shoulders drawn down and keep pulling the navel in towards the spine okay so your back is holding straight make this as smooth as you can so have a feeling of sliding opposite arm and leg out as opposed to lifting and use the whole breath to do the movement so take your whole exhale to extend out your whole inhale to open out to the sides of the room your whole exhale to return and then inhale in now we're going to go just to the right leg and if you can have the right leg extended back Keep the navel drawn in so your back is still like a table. We're going to bend the knee and flex the heel. And you're doing little pulses of the heel up to the ceiling. So pressing up, 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 up. And just continue. And as you're pressing up, you want to feel like you're pressing your heel to the ceiling so it's not too bouncy. It should have the feeling of uphold, uphold, uphold. So it's really strong. And so not letting the lower back sink with it but keeping the navel pulled in so you're holding the, the spine stable and just strengthening your hamstrings and your glutes. Okay, and then hold here. We're gonna open the hip as you inhale, so turning the, the right hip up and then turning the right hip down and the knees might even cross one over the other. So you're lifting your right knee as you inhale and then lowering it as you exhale. And this is just kind of warming up the hips. If you can think that in your hips, it's like a dial. You're turning the dial open and you're turning the dial closed. That's it. The shoulders are staying down. The elbows are slightly bent. Okay, we're going to add on. We're going to open the hip up and then kick the leg out to the side like you're doing a karate kick. And then kick the leg over your left shoulder. And so the leg is kicking side to side. So we'll exhale as you kick the leg out to the right and inhale as you kick it out to the left. You can probably feel the work in your hips. Exhale, kicking the leg out to the right and inhale out to the left. And if you can, just gently looking at your foot with your eyes. So turning your head slightly to the right and slightly to the left. Okay, we'll just do two more. Pull your shoulders down, slight bend in the elbows. And we're keeping that leg up high. So it's really challenging your hips exhale right and inhale left good then step the right foot forward and bring yourself up into a kneeling lunge and so you want to pull the abdominals in curl the tailbone down and start off with your foot a little bit past your knees so you can shift your hips forward and your knee is not going past your toes stay here pull the abdominals in reach the arms back squeeze your shoulder blades together and down and lift the chest up and breathe here and so feeling the chest is really opening and the left the left hip but feeling the belly is staying drawn in okay staying here or if you can sweep the arms up lifting the chest clasping them together okay slight bend in the elbows the shoulders are down you're lifting the heart Okay, the navel stays drawn in. Take one more breath here. And as you breathe out, bring your left hand to the floor and your right hand to the tailbone and twist. So hand is onto the sacrum. You wanna roll your right shoulder back, pull both shoulders down and lift your chest. And make this about opening the chest as you get the rotation through your spine. So keeping the neck long, Imagining that your eye is on your breastbone and that that's where you're turning. Squeeze your right knee in so you feel your right big toe mound is rooted to the floor. Pull your navel in towards your spine and just gentle twist. Good. And then finally, land both hands down onto the inside of your foot. And so curl your back toes underneath you and lift the back knee. 
Now you can be on your hands or you can be onto your fingertips or you might even need to use books or a block for your foot and that's fine. Try to pull the shoulders down, reach your chest forward. Okay, so the back heel is reaching away. You're trying to have the feeling of the back leg being straight, the shoulders down, you're projecting your heart forward. And staying here, our final stage is you bring your hands on to your thigh. So you decide, okay? All of this is really challenging the strength in that right leg, okay? Always shoulders are down, send the heart forward, send the back heel away, pull the belly in, and then land everything gently down. Okay, we're gonna come into a plank position on the forearms. So if you can interlace your hands together, cross your thumbs, send your legs back, and um, just start off with the knees down for a quick sec. Squeeze your shoulders down your back, draw your navel to your spine, slightly curl your tailbone so you feel the abdominals in. You can always keep your knees down if you need to, but we'll try and lift the knees up and just push forward and back with your feet. Okay, and so, Spread out all 10 toes. And as you go forward, pull your shoulders down. So you're keeping the back of the neck long. Okay, and then if you can finish with your heels reaching back, but still pull your shoulders down. So feeling your armpits squeezed and pulling your navel in towards your spine. And just holding here, feeling the abdominals wrap in around the body so you're really working to lift away from gravity and then relax the knees down come into the child's pose hands shoulder width apart breathing into the back of the ribs you just letting the head rest feeling the expansiveness of your breath Good, okay, then come back up into the all fours position. You wanna have your shoulders drawn down, just a micro bend into your elbows, keeping your spine straight like a table. So we're reaching back through the left leg, bend the knee, flex the heel to the ceiling, and then just doing pulses up, up with the leg. And so the, again, the feeling like you're pressing the heel to the ceiling, so it goes up, hold, up, hold, up hold. And you keep the navel in towards the spine. So we're stretching open the hip, strengthening your glutes and your hamstrings, keeping your lower back safe. Okay, armpits are squeezed, neck is long. Good. And for four, three, two, and then hold it. So we're going to turn the hip open as you inhale and then turn it down as you exhale, bringing it down to wherever you like, but your knees might actually cross. So inhaling the hip opens and exhaling it closes. Again, if you can imagine that it's like in your hip is a dial. You're turning the dial open as you inhale. We're just lubricating the joints here, just getting them warmed up. One more time, inhale, lift, and exhale, lower. And then we're gonna lift and kick the leg out to the left. Exhale, kick left, and inhale, kick right and just gently turning your head so you can see your foot as you go side to side, keeping the neck long. So exhaling, kicking left, and inhaling, kicking right. So you wanna have your shoulder blades down your back. You wanna keep the navel in towards your spine. We're gonna do two more. Okay, so really strengthening the hips. And last one. Okay, and then send the left foot forward into a lunge. Bring yourself up and just take a moment to set yourself up so that you creep your front toes forward so they're a little bit past your knee. You want to pull the abdominals in and the tailbone down and then shift your pelvis forward, keeping the abdominals pulled in and making sure your knee doesn't go past your toes. And once you're here, reach the arms back, squeeze your shoulder blades together and down, lifting the chest, but pulling the navel in. Okay, staying here or sweeping the arms up. Arms can stay apart or clasp together with a slight bend in the elbows. So the shoulders are down, the chest is lifting. Okay, still keeping your navel pulled in. Take another deep breath in here. 
And as you breathe out, land your right hand down, bring your left hand onto your tailbone and twist. You see, you wanna draw the shoulders down and especially rolling your left shoulder back so you can lift the chest, having that feeling that the eye is on the chest. So the shoulders pull down as the heart lifts. Now in this twist, squeeze your left knee in. So you wanna feel that your big toe mound is anchored to the floor. The belly is pulled in as you gently wring out the spine. Okay, and then land both hands down on the inside of your foot. Curl your back toes underneath you and lift the knee off the floor. And you can be on your hands or your fingertips or possibly on a yoga block or on some books. Okay, pull the shoulders down, reach the chest forward. And so we're wanting to sink the hips towards the floor to get the stretch in the hip, but have the back leg reaching straight. So reaching the heel away and pulling the chest forward. So you feel a long energy from the breastbone all the way to your back heel. Staying here, or if you want, bringing your hands onto your thigh, final position. Lots of work in the front leg, so make sure you're taking care. Okay, shoulders are down, heart projecting forward, heel projecting back. Good, gently land. Good, and then if you can bring yourself to sitting. Okay, so in your sitting position, Start off with your legs as close together as you can. Just know that you can be sitting up onto something like a towel or a pillow if you need to get a little bit up out of your legs because actually sitting up straight is one of the hardest things to do. And so you want to be pressing your thighs down towards the floor so that you feel the thigh muscles, the quadriceps engaged so it's not a relaxed position so that the kneecaps are firmly pulled up. You're trying to sit right up onto your sitting bones so that your lower back is not rounded, but that you're right up. And really the spine is more important. So if you needed to bend your knees in order to get your spine straight, that would be better than straightening your legs and rounding your back. Okay, so make a wise decision there, putting the imperative on your spine, staying straight. And then we're gonna start off sitting tall and work through the feet. And so if you can just see my feet and your feet together here, we're gonna have four positions. Flex the feet back as position one, and you wanna flex all toes back the same amount. So pulling your pinky toes back and so that it feels as though your, back, your feet would be flat against the floor if you were standing. Then we're going to the ball of the foot or demi point position. So you're pressing through the ball of the foot, but the toes are still pulled back. That's position two. Then position three is you curl the toes and then it's a, you want to imagine like you've grabbed hold of a towel with your feet and you're going to keep hold of the towel, curl the toes back and then let them go into the flex to start again. Okay, so flexing the feet one, ball of the foot two, point the toes three, curl them back four. So we'll inhale to flex and ball of the foot, exhale to point and curl. Inhale to flex and ball of the foot. Exhale to point and curl. And so two more. And so you might find when you're doing this that your feet almost want to cramp, especially if you wear shoes that um, are quite rigid. And so um, just to be kind to yourself, but know that this is really good for the foot to remind it of all the joints and all the muscles that are in there. Um, and to maybe spend some more time um, stretching out your feet at the end of the day just so that they have more pliability because it's so important for the rest of your lower body and all the way up into your spine. Okay, so we're gonna have the feet flexed and if you can bring the feet to shoulder width apart, again, your legs can stay straight if that's possible. This could be done with your legs bent as well. So either way, a, a putting the priority on the spine. So let the hands just rest on the floor in front of you, just easy. And so this has four steps. We're gonna inhale as you lead from your breastbone. So hinging forward, imagining that you have a string on your chest, inhaling here. Then exhale as you pull the abdominals in from the low belly like you're getting hit full of wind. You're a sail on a sailboat, billowing out full of wind. Then inhaling as you round forward, leading with the crown of your head like you're diving forward. 
The abdominals are still pulled in. And exhaling as you stack yourself up one vertebra at a time against the imaginary wall. And we will flow. Inhale, hinge forward with the chest. Exhale, hollow out from the belly like a sail getting hit full of wind. Inhale, dive forward, leading from the crown of the head. And exhaling as you stack yourself up. And inhale, lead with the chest. And exhale, round from the belly, getting hit full of wind. Inhale, dive forward, leading with the crown of the head. And exhaling, rolling up for one more. Inhale, lead with the chest. Exhaling, rounding the spine, drawing the belly in. Inhale, hinging forward, leading from the crown of the head. And exhaling, rolling up. Good. Up at the top, bring the feet together. And if you can bring your hands onto your shoulders and just circle the elbows. I'm just letting this be free with a breath. And I'm wanting to do this so that you can focus on lifting the chest because so often here when we're sitting up tall, it can get sunk through the spine and sunk through the chest. So it's always trying to lift and open up through the breastbone. Okay, and then circling the arms. And if you can be thinking that the arms and the hands are really representative of the chest. So when the hands lift, the chest lifts. And when the hands open, the chest opens. Okay, so they really work together. Okay, and then we're going to pause with the hands bent at your sides. And I'm calling this position the cobra position. You can think of when we're on the stomach and we're pressing ourselves up into the cobra, that it has that same feeling. And I want you to exactly feel that way, that as you, with your hands here, it's like you're dragging your hands down an imaginary wall. The elbows pull down and the chest lifts. So you really create a pressing down to lift up feeling. So this is our neutral position. The abdominals are drawn in. Again, legs can be pressed straight or slightly bent. And we're gonna inhale for three pulses as you open the arms and twist to the right. Two, three, and exhale, come to center, dragging your chest up. And then other side, inhale, twist. Two, three, really gentle pulses. Exhale, drag your chest up. Inhale, three, two, one, exhale, center and drag up. Inhaling, if you can imagine that the spine is like a spiraling staircase. So each vertebra is a stair and it's all contributing from bottom to top and center. Inhaling, twisting bottom to top. And we'll do one more of each. The lower back doesn't really twist. It's really from the ribs and above. And so put the emphasis on turning from the ribs and above, keeping the lower back and the neck gentle, and then coming back to center. Okay, and so then if you can bend your knees and have your feet just a little bit apart, so very comfortable position, and don't have the legs bent in really tight um, so that it feels hard to hold yourself up. Let them be generously out so that it's easy to, to sit, and your feet can be down or up, it makes no difference. Okay, so moving, focusing on the spine, we're gonna inhale as you lift the chest, keeping the back of the neck long, so bending at the bottom tips of the shoulder blades into the high lift position, aiming the chest towards the sky. Come to vertical and then rounding from the pelvis. So imagining there's a dial on the pelvis and you're curving it back, drawing the navel in and then coming to center. So we inhale, dial the, pel the chest up and center. And then we dial the pelvis back. And if you can alternate, so on the inhale, the focus is the rib cage, turning the chest up and center. And on the exhale, the pelvis is turning. Okay, if you can, we'll add the arms. Inhale, dialing the chest up. Open the arms, exhaling, dialing the pelvis back. Okay, if you need to keep the hands on the legs, please do. Inhale, dialing the chest up open, exhaling, dialing the pelvis back, drawing the navel to the spine. Inhale, lifting the chest up, open and dialing the pelvis back. And then the last thing we'll do is just add a twist. So we'll inhale, dial the chest up, twist to the right, opening the chest, 
and then dial the pelvis back, rounding in the center. And other side, dialing the chest up, twist open, dialing the pelvis back, curling under. And inhaling, dialing chest, twist, and exhaling, curling the pelvis, drawing the navel in. And last one, inhaling chest, twist, curl back halfway and just hold here, breathing in to stay. And breathing down, curling out one inch more. Inhale, stay, curling down one inch more. We'll do two more breaths. Inhale, stay. Exhale, one inch. Inhale, stay. And all the way down. And once you're down, we'll just stay down and finish with a stretch. So um, cross your right heel over your left knee. Make sure that the you're bringing the leg across to the ankle and not to the foot so that the ankle doesn't get twisted. And then if you can bring the legs up and hold on either behind your thigh or on top of your shin. And if this doesn't work, if your arms don't feel like they're long enough or you have to distort your posture, then you can move so that you have your feet resting against the wall, okay? So either way is fine. Crossing your heel over your knee, pulling the legs in, and we'll just stay here and breathe. So in this stretch, aim the tailbone down towards the floor so you're not curling your pelvis off. It's staying down, so that's gonna dictate whether you're holding or whether you're resting your legs on the, the wall. And you wanna keep your chin in so the back of the neck is long, the shoulders are drawn down the back and easy. And just a gentle, bringing in of the legs. And if you can direct your breath to the back, so imagining that the lungs are really spanning the whole length of your back, from the upper back to the middle back to the lower back. And so as you breathe in, the whole back expands. And as you breathe out, it relaxes. Okay, and we'll just switch over to the other side. So crossing your left heel over your right knee and going to the ankle and not to the foot so the ankle isn't rolled. And then hinging the legs up into the air, resting them on the wall. And just seeing where you're holding underneath the shin or on top of the thigh because the flexibility in each hip can be really different. Okay, and so making sure it feels comfortable so you can have the back of the neck long, the shoulders down and the tailbone down. In directing your breath into the whole back. So trying to feel the whole back spread and press into the floor as you inhale. And the whole back relax into the floor as you exhale. And you'll feel the stretch through the hip, through the glutes, uh, for sure. That's wonderful. But also direct your breath into the back as well, because all of that is connected through our connective tissues. And then if you can hug both legs into your chest and roll onto your right side like you're sleeping on your side. And then just saying very lazy, use your hands to bring yourself up to sitting in whatever position feels comfortable to sit in. Okay, and sitting up as tall as you can, if you can lift the belly, lift the chest and bow the head down. And your hands can either be resting onto your thighs or you can bring your hands together at your chest as a gesture of closing in this practice and of bowing down towards yourself and just giving yourself some respect and some love. And wonderful. So I hope that feels very good, everybody, that you felt really wonderful in your body, that you learned things, you felt your body in a new way, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks for joining me. Wishing you well.